Hey, welcome back. This one's been requested a couple of times, so without further delay, here's my Freedom Frigate PvP build. Some backstory. Prior to the Intel revamp, this was my main anti-Exodus build, and it still performs quite nicely in this area. Back then, and even now at the time of recording, the Freedom is one of only three ships in the game that can use all of the following simultaneously. Emergency Powered Auxiliary 3, Attack Pattern Lambda 3, Beam Overload 3, and Narrow Sensor Bands. Those of you who are regular PvPers already know where I'm going with this, but the reason why you would want to run those things is that you would be able to have the maximum amount of perception while keeping the highest rank of beam overload for damage. The cherry on top is Narrow Sensor Bands, which is a 10 second immunity to placate. So if you're fighting someone using Exodus and covering the gaps with the Aux to Sif Placate, a pretty common standard build type, uh, a build using the abilities I listed would be extremely effective as a counter to it. Now of course with the Intel revamp, Intel team itself grants perception, which opens up the possibilities a bit more. A ship that combines pilot and Intel, as opposed to pilot and miracle worker, is arguably the better anti-exodus ship right now. This is because not only can that type of ship have even higher perception, but also because many players have traded their aux to sif placate for aux to dampers instead to avoid the evade target lock disable. This also means that the immunity to placate that narrow sensor bands gives us is not as useful as it once was. Of course, that's not to say that these Pilot plus Miracle Worker builds are not effective, they're still very good. Narrow Sensor Band still provides immunity to the Pseudo Submission Placate, so it's not wasted, and it also increases accuracy and bonus damage as well. Oh, and for those curious, the other two ships capable of running this type of build are the Legendary Excelsior, which I picked up recently and would highly recommend, and the Vulcan Jelly Scout Vessel. I'll probably do a separate video at some point, but if you have the legendary Excelsior, keep that in mind while watching this build because you could do almost the same exact build on that ship as the Freedom, but in a 4-4 layout cruiser with a lot more hull capacity. Alright, so a couple of quick notes about the Freedom itself. This ship has an extremely high hull modifier of 1.3. Because of that, it can be quite tanky, and especially since our basic healing method using protomatter consoles are based on total hull capacity, it makes those even more effective too. I would classify this ship along with a pretty short list of others as more of a heavy dogfighter, at least compared with the more common ones like the Kui-2 Raptor or Deimos pilot ship. Of course there is a trade-off, that extra hull capacity comes at the cost of some turn rate and speed, but it's still quite agile with a base turn of 14 and an impulse modifier of 20. That means you aren't going to be chasing down the fastest of ships, but you're still going to be quicker than average. I already mentioned this ship has both pilot and miracle worker seating, but part of the reason this ship is so fantastic is that all of the seating is universal except for a commander engineering seat. My attitude in a lot of these PvP builds is that I want the least amount of wasted space, and especially with tactical abilities which seem to be stuffed into a lot of ships that would be otherwise great for PvP. This also means that the way I build this ship might be completely different from someone else, and I probably could show five or more different bridge officer setups that would work effectively. That's also why, kind of like the legendary Jem'Hadar video, I'm going to start off with the bridge officer layout because that's going to define the rest of the build more than the gear or traits, which is all pretty standard stuff. Okay, so this is my preferred bridge officer layout for this ship. I've tried a couple of different things, but I keep coming back to this. My engineering commander seat has reverse shield polarity in the commander position. This is a nice way of keeping shields up and staying alive a bit longer, but you could easily use directed energy modulation instead to be a bit more aggressive. Next I have emergency power to engines 3, which I cycle with emergency power to shields 1 in the ensign position. Keep in mind what I said before about perception though. I can and will swap this out for Emergency Power to Aux 3 if I feel I need that extra perception, then I'd give up Shields 1 for Engines 1. Never give up Emergency Power to Engines on a PvP build. The Lieutenant Seat has Auxiliary to Dampers. This is to avoid being disabled by Evade Target Lock. 
If they ever fix that, I'll most likely swap back to Auxiliary to Structural Integrity field so I can have another defensive placate. To finish out engineering, in the Ensign Universal seat, I'm using Engineering Team, another must-have for PvP builds since it clears subsystem offlines, holds, and disables. Except evade target lock. Let me cover Science next because that's quick. In the Lieutenant Universal seat, I'm running Science Team 1, used to clear debuffs like Subnucleonic Beam or Spore Infused Anomaly's Drain Effect. Then Photonic Officer 1 to help with cooldowns. This is not enough on its own, but I'm also running the Boimler Effect trait, or alternatively, you could use some Borg Duty Officers, or any combination of the three. The real exciting part of this build is the two Lieutenant Commander seats, which are also Specialist seats. I run Romulan operatives in both of them to maximize my outgoing criticals. In the Miracle Worker seat, I have Beam Overload 3, which is my main source of damage, and Cannon Scatter Volley, which triggers a trait and a second chance at my heals. Then I'm using Narrow Sensor Bands 1, pretty much just for the immunity to placates, although the other benefits are nice as well. In the Pilot seat, I have Lambda 3, which is the most accuracy and perception I can get, and Pilot Team 2, which gives me 4 seconds of movement debuff immunity every 10 seconds or so. And Tactical Team, which I use mainly to cleanse an enemy ship's Lambda debuff off of me. Most Intel Team and Exodus ships use Lambda to reduce your perception, so being able to clear that is important. I'm only going to show one other alternate layout this time, or we'd be here all day. In this layout, I'm basically giving up perception and some survivability for a nice amount of bonus damage. This build will hit harder, but may have a bit more difficulty actually landing those hits. Everything is about little trade-offs. In this variation, I'm using Emergency Power to Weapons 3 instead of Aux or Shields, which grants a nice 16.6% .6 bonus damage buff. I've also slightly changed the other seats. I've squeezed in Mixed Armament Synergies and dropped Lambda 3 for Omega 1. That's a healthy amount more bonus damage than the first layout, but does lose some accuracy, perception, and shield hardness. If you run this layout, be sure to fit a turret in the rear so you benefit from Mixed Armament Synergies as much as possible. My current layout does not have a turret, but I really think you'd need one if you're using this layout. For gear, on this ship I'm actually using Plasma Beams. I had this idea about reducing enemy damage using Ferenginar dual beam banks, and in hindsight I think ultimate plasmas would have been the better choice. Either way, proc chances are so low anyway it doesn't really matter that much. I've also accumulated some lobby and wanted to do a bit of an experiment, which is why this setup is so odd. I have both the three-piece ultimate and the three-piece isolytic plasma sets crammed onto the same build here. That's also why I have two rear-facing torpedoes. I rarely, if ever, see those land any kind of noticeable hit, but they aren't meant to fire, they're just there for the set bonuses. Oh, and of course, I have the Lucari Pizio Plasma Array for technical overload, just like any other PvP beam build that I run. These set bonuses are nothing critical to this build, by the way. You could just as easily run Phaser, Disruptor, Polaron, and so on instead, and the build would be similarly effective. Let me cover these plasma set bonuses real quick anyway though. The ultimate Omni, Torpedo, and Console are all slotted on this ship. The Omni has a really great proc where landing a critical hit on an enemy is a guaranteed negative 15 plasma and kinetic damage resistance debuff. With the high criticals of builds like this, that basically means I have this debuff on enemies constantly. The Console also has a nice passive 35 accuracy boost along with some crit chance and the little pet it creates is actually beneficial at times because it will attempt to target your target and will actually use up an enemy pseudo submission placate so you don't have to worry about it as much. Kind of nice if an unexpected advantage. The real highlight of course is the three piece clicky ability which grants 100% fire cycle haste for 12 seconds. One of my favorite techniques is to time this along with narrow sensor bands so I can effectively double my damage output for that period of time and since I can't be placated, I can really put out a lot of damage during that window. This has a long 2 minute cooldown, but it's definitely a cool ability. The next set is the Isolytic set, with the dual beam in the front and its Tricobalt torpedo in the rear. The Tricobalt is pretty awful, but the dual beam is actually pretty nice. Critical hits with this weapon have almost 32 armor pen, so it's very effective. 
There's a lot of confusion on this stat, and I was planning to do a deep dive video, but the short version here. Hull penetration and armor penetration are two different stats. 32 hull pen would only be about 3.2 armor pen. So we deal damage to a target as if it had 3.2 less damage resistance rating, and that's not a very big difference. 32 armor pen, however, is substantial. That would be the equivalent of our enemy losing 32 resistance rating, which is as much as superior area denial or attack pattern beta 1 would give. Of course, that only benefits this weapon, and it has one absolutely huge critical flaw. It can't be re-engineered for some reason. That's a huge disappointment for a low B weapon. Mine rolled as critical hit times 3, which sucks. If I could re-roll this to damage times 4 or critical damage times 4, I might consider this one of the better dual beam banks in the game. I hope someday it gets fixed. I know that they're going through and fixing some things that can't be re-engineered. The last piece of this set is the console, which grants a few useful boosts. 42 accuracy, the most from any single console in the game, as well as 42 control, which is a lot. The last one is 42 ablative plating skill, which is roughly 10 more kinetic and physical damage resistance rating. How much more resistance that actually gets you depends on what other resistances you have slotted, but it's a pretty minor amount either way. The three-piece set of this one doesn't grant an active ability, but it does have three benefits, just like the console itself, and interestingly, the wiki entry for this is incorrect, currently. In-game, you'll get 40 hull penetration, that's 4% armor pen for all weapons, 40 weapon specialization, which is 1.6% crit chance, and the last one, 40 all damage resistance rating. That's actually a pretty good amount of resistance, especially keeping in mind all the other stat bonuses from the set. Okay, all of that said, neither of these sets is required or even optimal for this build. I'm using them mostly because I think it's cool to do a souped up plasma build, and I had these lobby sets anyway, and I wanted to put them to good use. In short, don't go out and blow a bunch of lobby thinking you need to replicate this exact build. If you're on a budget or focus purely on performance, phasers or disruptors with the Discovery 2 piece set will outperform these in most situations. As for the rest of the build, I'm using the Jem'Hadar deflector for more stealth detection, but I just as happily use a colony deflector instead. Then I'm using the competitive engines for their speed along with the two-piece discovery core and shield, which grants a nice 120% hull regen even while in combat, and some extra hull capacity and outgoing shield damage. I'd also be happy to use the three-piece competitive set as well. I already talked about the ultimate and weapon sensor enhancer consoles from those lobby sets. The rest of my consoles are four protomatter tactical consoles, which forms the bulk of my healing. I'd consider using five if really necessary, but four seems like a reasonable balance. My last TAC console slot is actually the Alachi Rift Jump which I use for escaping difficult situations like being held up in size spam. My engineering slots contain hull image refractors, which is here for the temporary hull, and tachyon detection field, which you can grab for free from the tier 3 nebula. This console grants a noticeable perception boost, keeping with the theme of this build. I don't always run this configuration, so sometimes I trade this console out for something like a Pax Triburnium, which gives a very sizable boost to both hull capacity and resistances. Next is DPRM, which I use defensively for its fast hull regen and bonus damage resistance rating. I grabbed this cheap since I'm on KDF, but I'd be just as happy with something like Molecular Phase Inversion in the same slot, which you can get for free. The next is Bioneural Infusion Circuits, which I run on a lot of builds like this for the extra hull capacity and criticals. My last universal console slot is the Martok console by itself right now. This console provides a large hull and shield capacity boost as well as some extra power and turn rate, and since the ship already has such a high hull capacity, it makes sense to kind of play to the strengths of the ship as a platform. My specializations are pretty predictable at this point too. Command is primary for boost morale clicky, which I use for myself or to help out a teammate when they have a lot of debuffs. My secondary is Miracle Worker. This adds some nice damage resistance benefits and automatically clears damage over time effects and drain effects. I think I could reasonably use Intel also as my secondary, which would give a bit more perception if combating stealth ships was my priority. 
As for traits, I'm sporting my usual array of defensive traits like context is for kings, redirected armor plating, give your all, and pseudo submission. Since I'm a tactical captain, I'm also using a good day to die, which lets me use go down fighting at any hull amount, which is very useful as it's a solid 50% bonus damage for 15 seconds and has a really quick cooldown. My other more offensively oriented traits include self-modulating fire, Terran targeting systems, fragment of AI tech, and intelligent agent attaché. It may be worth also considering traits like beam training, fleet coordinator, fluidic cocoon, adaptive offense, or inspirational leader, all of which have various benefits. The last two traits I haven't mentioned yet are fresh from r and which allows me to use my team abilities more rapidly as well as clearing a control effect every 30 seconds, and the Boimler effect, which helps with cooldowns across the whole ship. My starship traits are very debuff oriented this time. I'm using superior area denial and cold hearted together, which is very effective against ships without a lot of temporary hull like many healers and science ships. Remember, temporary hull isn't affected by damage resistance debuffs, so it may be better to use traits like preferential targeting or pedal to the metal if you find yourself fighting ships with more temporary hull. The next two traits are Super Weapon Ingenuity, which is so we have no gaps in beam overload fire, and Weapon Emitter Overdrive, which is a substantial but possibly unnecessary accuracy boost, at least on this build, since I'm already at such a high accuracy rating already from my consoles. This trait has the negative of increasing weapon power cost, but that's mostly mitigated by the trait Rhythmic Rumble, which both reduces weapon power cost as well as drastically increases our resistances. If I didn't have Rhythmic Rumble, I wouldn't run Weapon Emitter Overdrive for sure. The last slot is Invincible from the Zal Cruiser, good for saving us from the occasional mistake so we can stay in the fight. Reputation traits are also very offensively oriented this time, and I'm running all three critical boosts, Advanced Targeting Systems, Tyler's Duality, and Precision. I also have Viral Engines Overload, which helps slow down enemy ships and makes them easier to kill, and the last one is Advanced Hull Reinforcement, which helps get us above 75% damage resistance in optimal conditions. My duty officers are similar to the Defiant build I posted before. I have the Aux to Dampers extension doff along with a Warp Core Engineer that clears debuffs. Since I'm running Reverse Shield Polarity 3 anyway, I'm using a blue RSP doff, although a purple would be even better, of course. I also have the Con Officer that recharges evasive maneuvers from the Phoenix box, and 20 of 47, which gives a nice buff to accuracy and armor penetration. And lastly, an energy weapons officer that has a very small chance of stripping three random buffs from enemies. This one's really questionable. If you're lucky enough for it to even activate, many players have 20 or 30 buffs active at once, so you're really rolling the dice here. However, if you're lucky enough to strip someone's intel team, Rhythmic Rumble, or something else critical, it could be a really big advantage for you. So that's the build I use on this ship. The universal seating makes the potential nearly endless, so there can be a lot of variations on this ship, and that's why some players might love it while others hate it. If your playstyle happens to coincide with a build that works on this ship, it can easily be one of the most fun ships to fly in the game. It also has the added benefit of being very small. So far, the only T6 ship I've found that's smaller in the game is the La Serena, and I really like small ships. Thanks for watching.